I'm a liver transplant person. Um, they asked me to come and share my story, and of course I said yes, because I would do anything for the liver transplant team. They're my angels, my heroes, and my brothers and sisters, and they're just, they're just awesome. About, I also wanted to say that mine isn't a story, and the rest of you who've received are receivers and survivors. It's not a story that we tell. It's a miracle that happened. So I want to share my miracle with you. About seven years ago, I was diagnosed with fatty liver disease. And my doctor in Logan was wise enough to refer me down to the transplant center to meet the, the hepatologist here so they could track, trace me, track me, and know that I was out there. And I was fortunate enough to be able to see Dr. Freck, who is an awesome guy. I love him dearly. And he tracked me. It's probably about three years or four. And then I had to cancel one of my appointments. I was seeing him every six months. And I canceled and I never rescheduled it. And I got a call from the transplant center and they said, Dr. Freck has noticed you haven't been here to see him. He wants to see you. And I go, wow, when does a doctor ever do that? So I came down and saw Dr. Freck and we looked at my MELD score. And unbeknownst to me, it was at 17, which is high enough to be on the list on the waiting list for a liver. I knew I was in trouble. My older brother, Daniel, was waiting for a liver. He needed a transplant as well. And three years ago, next week, he passed away and succumbed to pneumonia before a liver could be found for him. And so I knew I was circling a drain and that I needed a miracle. <clears throat> so I did the work and had all the exams, and in fact, I'm so happy this is one of the few times that I've been to this place where I haven't had to sh change into a gown that I could just you know, wear normal clothes. So I came down, I did all the exams and everything that I needed to do, and by March I was listed on the, on the list. Of course, I was down the list quite a ways. And within six weeks, I got a call. They said, you are number two on the list. Could you come down and just be here in case the intended doesn't take the liver and then it could be available for you? So I did that. I thought, wow, this is cool. Six weeks and I'm going to be good again. So we came down and we sat out in that lobby with the guy doing this for quite a while. And then they... Uh, the, con the surgeon had called and said he was confident that the liver would come to me and I went upstairs on, to get prepared to go to the operating room. I had my family with me and the PA for the transplant surgeon came in and talked about all the things that could happen, all the things that couldn't happen, what I had to sign for, what my risks were, what the bill was going to be, all these things. And did I have a living will? Did I have this? Did I have that? Emotionally, I was a wreck. I was such a wreck. And then they had me all ready to go to the operating room and they checked the computer and the liver was taken by the person in front of me. I was so relieved, if that doesn't sound weird, but I, I wasn't ready emotionally. So that was a blessing to me to be able to get prepared. So time went on and I had nosebleeds every night. I had dry heaves all the time, cramps in my feet and my ankles. Um, I was beginning to retain water, get some um, ascites. I had varices, and I'd been hospitalized a couple of times with those. Even had to ride in an ambulance all the way from Logan here because of the risk of bleeding. So it felt like riding in my dad's farm truck, but <laughs> I guess that's okay. So I had gone through quite a bit, and they started me on some, some water pills to get the water out of my body. And in, when they did that, this was the middle of summer, I was restricted to one and a half liters of water. Try that in July. <laughs> it was hard. And so then my belly filled up, so it would, it would be way out here, and even around my back, all this fluid. And there, the month before I got my transplant, they were draining 11 liters out of my belly every week. I was so miserable, and I knew 
my time was getting short. And then I got the call. It was on November 4th, and I was just sitting home, watching TV, drinking my Diet Coke, and kept knocking up, you know, counting my one and a half liters. And I got a call from someone at uh, the transplant center, and it wasn't anyone that I had met. And they said, how are you this evening? And I said, oh, I'm doing fine. How are you? And she's watching a movie. She says, well, I'm fine. She says, have you had dinner yet? What is it to you? You know, because <laughs> I said, no, I haven't. She says, well, the surgeon would like you to have a light dinner and then come down here. How soon could you be here? I said, uh, yeah, I figured I'd get there at 8. Well, I could have been there sooner. But I'm just, yeah, 8 o'clock. Because I, I didn't know what they wanted. And she says, OK. And starts talking about the process. When I get here, you need to come up to the 10th floor, and blah, 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 blah. And I said, excuse me, what number am I in line? And she says, oh, you're the intended. I don't think I've ever jumped so high. I don't think I've ever had such great tears of joy. And I was on my knees thanking the creator for that great gift. And so we came down here and they got me ready for surgery. It took quite a while because they were still checking the liver. It was in California and they told me that I was way down the list for this liver. But people kept dropping off, dropping, 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 dropping. So to me, the fact that I got the liver was another miracle that I had just received. So we came down here and I got ready for surgery. My nephew, Nate, there's Nate over there, gave me a blessing that everything would be well. My sister and my best friend, Barb, were with me all the time. And they got me ready for surgery. And when they took me to surgery, there was a, the nicest PA that took me down. I, they rolled me down to the operating room and they parked me in the hall. <laughs> what? And anyway, then there was another guy down the hall that said, ma'am, how tall are you? And the, the guy that had rolled me down said, don't ask her, answer. He's just hitting on you. So they kept me amused <laughs> down there waiting for my surgery. Um, Dr. Fujita came and talked to me about the liver I was getting and, and that it was a good liver, liver and to, I could be confident that things would go well. And then my surgery, I was, I was so scared, as you all have been and can imagine. And Dr. Alonzo came out with those great big shining eyes and right nose to nose with me. She said, are you excited? I said, I'm scared. <laughs> she said, that's okay, everybody's scared. So from that point on, I had a peace about me that things were gonna be fine. That my surgeon had talked to me, I knew I was in good hands. Dr. Fujita had talked to me. He's awesome too. So it was time to take me into the operating room. And they, were, they put a gas mask on me to get me to go to sleep. And there's a little pocket. I could still get some real air. And I was sucking that in because I didn't like the gas. And I heard him say, did anybody get it out of the baggie? And I said, my liver's in a baggie. And I thought the, the SEAL team would bring it or something. It would have armed guards and be in this big gold box that, you know, that not even kryptonite could penetrate, because that was my liver. No, it's in a baggie. And I said, why is it in a bag? You were tired of hearing from the peanut gallery, obviously. <laughs> so I underwent surgery. Everything went fine, and I came out. But one thing I hadn't accounted for was recovery. My focus and my goal got to where I would get a liver. I hadn't even considered any of the recovery or anything that happened after. And my recovery has gone well, but it's been, it's been an uphill climb. But I'm so grateful for all of the miracles. I felt my brother Dan at my side when I came out of surgery. I didn't know he was there. And I was so happy to wake up and see my sister who wouldn't let me have any water for two days. Thank you. <laughs> the doctors wouldn't let me have any water, so I blamed her for it. And so everything went well. I was able to leave the hospital, I think in, it was maybe a week or five days, rented a, an apartment here in Salt Lake so I could stay close to the hospital. And I had another bout with, uh, with my bile duct, it had twisted, so I had a little setback with that, but I came out of that just fine. 
I was home by Christmas, and what a blessing it was. Um, I was so skinny, I had lost so much weight, they told me, make sure you keep up on protein so you don't lose weight. And I said, I don't need to worry about that. I play college basketball. I know how to do all this stuff. Well, I had dropped 70 pounds. And there was a, I went into, this was before my surgery, I had gone into Smith's to get a loaf of French bread and some other things. And you know how they have the French bread up in front by the checkout stands? And we all know the best stuff's on the bottom rack, right? So I'm stooping down, choosing my loaf of bread, I stand up, and my pants don't. They're down <laughs> around my knees. And here we are by the check stand. Everybody's going, oh, nice to see you. And let me tell you, it's hard to run while pushing a cart, pulling up your pants, and holding on a loaf of bread. So <laughs> I had a lot of adventures, and I've, I've been so blessed. So many miracles along the way, and so many people. Prayers of friends, and prayers from people I don't even know from across the nation. And I'm so ever grateful for IMC and the liver transplant team, especially Dr. Freck and Alicia Stone, Dr. Alonzo, Dr. Fujita, and most of all, my coordinator, Craig. I love those guys, like family. I think that the change that has come over me since I've received this liver, this wonderful gift, is that I view life differently now. I look out and instead of thinking, gee, what can I get? What can I do? What's going to be fun for me? What can I get? I look at life differently, like, how can I give back? How can I give to people? And that's my pledge. In memory of my donor and the donor's family, out of respect and love for the liver team who brought me a second chance to actually to extend my life, and to give back to this wonderful community and to just any, any way I can better anyone's life with a gift that I received. It's my vow that I will do that. And know that these aren't just stories, these are all miracles. Thanks.